Hi, welcome to another episode of Office Hours with the Math Sorcerer. Today's episode is really fun because the question is kind of challenging and I think I have a good answer. So I'm going to read the email I received and I'm going to do my best to answer it. If you're watching this on YouTube and you have any advice for the person, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you are listening via YouTube uh, podcast or Spotify podcast, um, yeah. So you can come to YouTube and leave a comment if you want. Okay, I'm going to open the email here and read it. It's really quite interesting. The person's name is Colton, and the topic is Functional Analysis Advice Undergraduate. Hi, I am a math undergrad at the University of, and I'll leave the name out. Firstly, I want to say that I love your videos. I've watched a lot since I've joined last year, and I love all the content, especially the material that's about navigating mathematics as opposed to the mathematics itself. I very often feel like learning the tools, tricks, life hacks, etc., for being a math major is more important than the actual math. A little digression, but here's my question. I am doing an informal tutorial with a faculty member right now in functional analysis. And I am drowning, it's all in caps, we meet once a week for an hour and are currently discussing Bonnock spaces and linear operators. The big issue, I haven't taken real analysis or topology. I have taken elementary linear algebra and learned some other advanced material along the way. All the books intended for undergraduates are still very difficult to parse through. Do you have any recommendations on books that could help me through this topic or any general advice? I've watched your videos concerning functional analysis and was hoping you'd have a bit more wisdom you could lend. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate all that you've done so far via YouTube. Well, first let me say thank you, Colton, for this message. It's a wonderful message. I have all kinds of things to say and all kinds of advice. I hope it helps you. It might not be what you want to hear, but let's get started. So first, let me comment on your statement. You said, uh, you appreciate the content, especially the material that's about navigating mathematics as opposed to the mathematics itself. I feel that learning the tools, tricks, and life hacks, etc., for being a math major is more important than the actual math. Yeah, I think it's really important too because, you know, to learn math, you just have to sit down and do it and it takes forever and it's hard, but like knowing how to do that and having some motivation, some inspiration, knowing the best way to do that you know, there's all kinds of things that go along with learning. And I, I agree. I think that learning how to learn is far more important than learning because once you learn how to learn, you can learn on your own. I had this friend I used to work with, a great guy, super wise. He, um, he had uh, three master's degrees, right? Three master's degrees uh, in mathematics, engineering, and I think in physics. But he had three of them, pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, some of them from MIT. And he always said that the big thing about getting a college degree is not so much the material you learn, it's that you learn how to learn. So that really resonates with me. Um, and I agree with your comment about how those things are very, very important. That's one of the reasons I make those types of videos. Anyways, I went on off on a tangent. Let's talk about functional analysis. So learning functional analysis is a challenge and you say that you've already watched my videos. So I always recommend uh, this book here, this is the book by Kreisig. Uh, it's called Introductory Functional Analysis with Applications. This is the international edition, and it was still kind of expensive. Um, that's why I have this edition. The regular edition is much more expensive. Um, I'll leave links uh, to the YouTube video in the description to all the books I talk about here, but worth getting. Unfortunately, the Kreisig book, in my opinion, is the easiest functional analysis book that you can purchase. I don't think there is an easier book. However, um, doesn't mean that you shouldn't get other books. You mentioned also that uh, all the books intended for undergraduates are still very difficult to parse through. Yes, that's just the way it is. They're all really hard. So my advice is get as many books as you can get on functional analysis. One of the reasons I have so many books is because, in fact, it's the main reason, math is hard, right? Math is very tough. So whenever I was trying to learn a new subject, I would gather as many books and resources as I could gather and just 
lay them all out over my kitchen table and just study, right? Try to learn, try to do my homework when I wouldn't understand something in one book. You know, if I didn't understand the Kreisig book, I'd pick up the book by Rudin, you know, Functional Analysis by Rudin. And maybe there's something in the Rudin book that can help me. So that's my advice. Get every single functional analysis book that you can afford and just do the best you can. But I also have some more advice that I think is going to be more helpful than that. And that's try not to worry so much. You know, I I actually did I actually did the same thing you did. I had the same exact experience you did, but with abstract algebra. And abstract algebra ended up being my favorite field of mathematics after that. So I actually did an independent study. I'm getting I'm getting chills here uh, in abstract algebra with a professor. He was actually the he was actually the undergraduate chair. So he was like, you know, who you would go to if you were a math major and you needed advice. So I went to him and I asked him, hey, you know, can you do can you do an independent study with me? And he said yes. And I was so happy. And he gave me these abstract algebra books that he wanted me to read. And he said, I want you to read this and I want you to learn this. And Eventually, I'd like to get to something called, it was called the Hilbert Basis Theorem. Okay, it's a statement about Noetherian rings. Um, and I had to prove that in his office. And he, he told me to read certain books and stuff, and I couldn't do it. I felt like I was drowning. Just like you, I was drowning, and the sharks were coming, and I was so stressed. I would come home from school, and I would do my homework, and then I would spend the rest of my time obsessing over this independent study that I was doing with this professor, who's a great professor, um, just amazing. And so what What did I do? Well, I read something else. He gave me a book, uh, I think it was called Advanced Abstract Algebra uh, by Joseph Rotman, who actually unfortunately passed away a few years ago, I, I found out, really sad. And great book, and I ended up reading that book and like teaching myself ring theory. And then when I went back next week, I was like, you know, I tried to read the stuff you told me to read, but I didn't really understand it. But here's what I did learn. And I showed him what I learned about, you know, PIDs, which are principal ideal domains, and UFDs, which are unique factorization domains. And I showed him what I learned from abstract algebra on my own. And I showed him what I was able to prove. And I showed him I was able to understand these proofs. And he was very pleased. He said, well, show me what you learned. So I got up on the board and I showed him a little proof that I learned. And that was sufficient. He was satisfied because he saw that I was putting in an effort. So my advice to you is to do that, right? If he's telling you to like read certain things and you don't know those things, learn what you can, right? Get the Kreisig book and, you know, just learn learn the introductory material at the beginning of the book. Learn what you can, right? Prove some stuff about, you know, completeness proofs or something, right? Just do what you can from the functional analysis books that you have on hand and show him what you've learned. And I think he'll appreciate that. And he says, well, you did, you know, if you didn't learn this, explain why. And at that point, it depends on him as a human being, right? Is he going to be a good person or she? Are they going to be a good person? Are they going to say, hey, this student is learning and they're trying and they're making an effort and that's awesome. So the professor I work with was was a really good guy and and so that worked out. I had another person I knew who did an independent study with another professor and it didn't go so well, right? So um, it, it just depends. So that's not a story I'm going to tell, but he ended up, he ended up getting a C on his independent study. And if he's watching this video, <laughs> let me know. Sometimes he watches my videos, this guy, but yeah, his independent study didn't go so well. So typically that's my advice for independent studies. Do what you can and show the professor that, you know, you can do it. You can make an effort and you can learn. So hopefully this keeps you from having that drowning feeling. Um, that's, that's not a good feeling. And yeah, yeah, I hope it's been helpful. If anyone else has advice on functional analysis, uh, I'd really like to know too. You know, let me know, uh, let us know in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment about functional analysis, uh, other resources um, that Colton can use for his independent study. This is a fairly recent email, so I'm going to try to post this video uh, and this podcast soon, hopefully. So ho hopefully Colton gets it. But yeah, don't worry so much. You know, you're going to be all right. Um, it's an independent study. Typically, you know, professors give good grades. Not always. You know, there's I have that horror story about uh, a person I knew who got a C in an independent study. But mine was really good. I got an A, um, no problems. And right from the beginning, I was lost. I was drowning. I did not know what was going on. Uh, I mean, this guy gave me some really old school books, classics written by people who helped create the field of abstract algebra. And I was, you know, 
I'm reading these books and reading some of these topics and they were really, really advanced, you know, um, things that you don't even find in regular abstract algebra books. And so again, what I did was I read the preliminary stuff. I learned that stuff. And I thought, this is what I'm going to learn. And I'm just going to tell them I didn't understand. I learned this and it worked out. It was a great experience. I'll never forget it. I'll remember it for the rest of my life. And hopefully you can make this independent study a really good experience. And I think if you try this, try it. I think it might turn it around, right? Just try to like, next time you see him, go back and have something ready, you know? Have something you can say, hey, this is what I learned. I know how to do this in functional. I can do this. This is pretty good. I don't understand this. What what should I do? I, I really can't understand this. Should I keep reading what I'm doing? And he might say yes, and then you can continue along your own path, right? Because it's an independent study. It's about you learning. And anything you can learn related to functional analysis, even if it's just the beginner stuff, is is better than nothing. So yeah, hopefully this keeps you from drowning. Good luck and take care.